In today's video, I'm going to show you my secret for painting realistic foliage and grass. And it's not about painstaking hyper detail. Hi, I'm Lane Johnson. I teach classical painting techniques for landscape painters. Welcome to my studio. Let's be honest. For some things, like painting details, you really do need to use high quality brushes that are in good shape. An old liner brush is pretty ineffective. For other things though, such as painting foliage and grasses, in a landscape painting, old damaged brushes work especially well. But what if you don't have a bunch of old brushes lying around? No problem, I've got the answer for you. With a few simple tools and some inexpensive brushes, you can create your own custom foliage and grass brushes. We use these brushes in most of my classes, so my students hear me talk about them all the time. But I thought you would find these brushes useful as well. As you can see, I have lots of brushes, and these are only some of them. But some of these old, worn, messed up brushes can be your best friend sometimes. They will give you textures that a new brush will not give you. So, that's what we're gonna do today. Create some foliage and grass brushes. You can find a list of supplies you'll need in the description below. Also, so you can see how I use the brushes when I'm painting, I have a few demos for you at the end, so stick around for that. Before we dive in, one word of caution. Like anything, it'll take practice using these brushes to get the effect you want. So be sure to play with them. That's the fun part. Okay, we've got two different brushes. Uh, this one is a flat one and a half inch uh, chip brush. These are chip brushes, kind of like bristle brushes. These are really cheap. Uh, this is one half inch. Uh, you could get these at your local hardware, you know, or paint store. And what we're going to do is try to create a, a brush that has a certain texture to it. Take your scissors and cut into these, the end part of this. And we're trying to cut at some angles, not necessarily straight in. What we're trying to achieve is a sense of, you know, asymmetry, natural looking uh, grasses. So in other words, you don't want it to look like it's in a row, like one, two, three, four, five. You want it to be like an odd, unusual, uh, natural looking uh, texture. So you kind of have to just play with this. And, you know, these things are not very expensive. So... You can make several of these. In fact, I have, because that way you have a variety. And as you can see, this is pretty messy, so you might want to do it over, you know, a trash can or, or whatever you want. The second half of this is that after you do your various cuts and you're getting all the extra, uh, you know, bristles out of it, you're going to try to damage it. You're going to stomp it a little bit and, and try to create a texture that's, like I said, you know, natural, not uniform. This is also very different than the, the foliage brushes that we made uh, with, round, uh, with a round brush. Uh, you can use those round foliage brushes in the brush area or the grass area of a painting because there's always something that has leaves on it on the ground, you know, shrubs and weeds, not just all grass. But what you're after is, you know, this asymmetry. Uh, you, don't want, you don't want an exact repeating pattern when you see that, you know, that it's not very natural looking. Just keep working it. If you mess one up, it's not a big deal because they don't cost that much. You know, you might go through a few of these before you get the hang of it. Now, pressing down on it. This is, you would not do this to a normal brush because you, you, this is how you mess up a brush. but. In the case of what we're trying to do, we're trying to mess up the brush. Let's look at this little guy. Half an inch. It's the same way. Now, we're using scissors. Uh, you could use an X-Acto knife on some of this, but a good sharp pair of scissors is, works really well. Uh, be careful because you can you know, cut yourself. You know, use caution. Yeah, 
you know, these are just regular scissors that I have, but I bet if you had a good sharp pair of uh, barber scissors, they would work well too. See how I'm stomping this in here? It's breaking up the, the, the regularity of the brush. It still needs a little bit more. And as you use these, they will become more damaged or more used, basically, and they'll create, uh, they'll have even better textures. Uh, you just have to be careful when you're using these kind of brushes in a painting because they will lose bristles and you don't want to leave bristles in the paint necessarily. So just keep an eye out for that. You know, brushes don't last forever either. Uh, if you have some good flat brushes that are long like this, that are old, you know, uh, it, they may not work as well as they did uh, initially as a new brush, you know, on a regular painting. So that they may be ready to turn into a uh, grass brush like this, because if, it, if it's not if it's not working as well as it had been new, then maybe it's time to turn it into something you can use again, like a like a grass brush. Stomp, stomp, stomp. We're getting there. You know, make a few of these, I'd suggest, and see uh, yeah, that when you use them also, you want to make sure you're not uh, using them in the same pattern. So typically you'll see me rotate and flip my hand different directions when I'm painting with these kind of things. You want to damage these things. Think of uh, like a, your hair on a bad day. You know, think of what's the worst thing that could happen to your hair. Well, that's a good thing to make uh, grass uh, brushes with. There we go. Now you can kind of see what we're after. Variety is the key. Again, having several of these to use in a certain location will uh, pretty much guarantee you're going to have a variety. Uh, at the same time, this is not the end result. These are typically uh, you can you can use these as final hits on, the, on a painting with detail, or you can start blocking in with these kind of things. Either way, it's a good brush and it's fun to make, so have fun making your brush. If you can't wait around for a really good used brush, then you can make your own. What I've gotten here are some uh, very inexpensive, cheap, round brushes. I use rounds for this kind of thing. These were not very expensive, so when you go to look for these, don't spend a lot of money. Don't buy good brushes for this. Buy cheaper synthetic type brushes. And again, if you have some used ones, that, that works out well too. What I'm going to do is start off with this one. Let me put these out of the way. And what I'm going to go for is something to end up like this. You can see it is kind of Got some damage to it, and you could work it as much as you can to keep it irregular because foliage is irregular. And that's what I see sometimes on people painting. They paint it in such a way that it's symmetrical, or it, it looks like the br you can see the brushes work in it, and, and nature is not necessarily like that. So let's start with this brush. It actually says it's a uh, number 12 round. So what I do is go into the end of it here and kind of with an exacto knife. I'm using a sharp exacto knife, so you have to be careful with this stuff. You don't want to cut yourself. And you're cutting at an oblique angle inside the brush like that. And the other thing you can do, starting with this, is you could use scissors. Um, basically, you pick up the brush and you cut into it. And roll the brush as you do it. You will be, in effect, ruining the, the round brush as for it for the purpose it was intended. But it's going to become the better brush for what we intend. 
Now, when we start painting trees, you can start with this kind of brush if you want to. I have. But uh, very often we'll start with regular brushes that are going to block in the basic shapes. And we don't go to these until we get ready to start. Uh, I don't want to say adding detail, but they're certainly good for adding detail in foliage. As you can see, it's starting to get a little feathered and messed up here. And let me go ahead and pull this off. A lot of bristles are coming out, so it's going to make a mess. Be aware of that. You can do this outside or over a trash can. But as you can see, it's starting to get a little messed up. And you can feel free to do this to a brush, something you would never do to a brush. But for our purposes, it's going to end up to be a beautiful brush, a unique brush. Yeah, there's, these things will be unique. That's why I very often get more than one and uh, use different, uh, you know, create different things. Uh, and as if this brush ages, it'll get even better. So again, feel free to do it like this, open it up and cut at an angle because you can be removing bristles here. This has already got a nice place out of it. This too. What you don't want is to create a brush that still has a symmetrical pattern to it. In other words, don't cut here, don't cut there, 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 there. there. Otherwise, you're defeating the purpose of the asymmetry, the natural look of foliage. So feel free to play with this. Like I said, don't buy good brushes for this. Buy cheap brushes for this. And you can get these brushes in different sizes. Uh, if I'm working on a larger canvas, I will, you know, work with a larger round. This is a much larger brush than this. And then if you're working on small, very much smaller uh, painting, then you can get uh, smaller brushes as well. It's just uh, you have to play with it. That's half the fun of doing this stuff is I like to monkey around with this and see what I can do and create a brush like this. So there you go. Okay, uh, I decided I wanted to make a few other brushes into foliage brushes. So I have located a few brushes that I had that were cheap ones. As you can see, this one here, it's got bristles sticking out. It's a cheap brush, it really is, but I've never used it before. Uh, both of these, I think, have been used. But again, this one's lost its point. It was a uh, it's been used, let's just say that. It used to have a good point on it. And this one actually is a good example of one that is a halfway decent brush already for, for foliage or for blending, but it's kind of fanned out. And, it's, and the problem is it's found out in a symmetrical way as opposed to asymmetrical way. It's fanned out evenly. And I want it not to create a round pattern, but something that's more irregular. So I'm gonna create some more brushes here. I'm going to tilt it down like that. Not exact enough here. Be careful with it. This bigger one, I probably could take scissors too if I wanted to. So I'm kind of going at a an angle to some of these bristles. Make sure your blade's sharp. Let me try the scissors in. I guess cuticle scissors will also make a good brush cutter. You take your time on this because uh, you can take them out, but you can't put them back. I mean, you can go down so far where it's not much of a, br a good brush at all, but you know, it's a cheap brush. That's the whole point of it. I'll brush on that one. Nope. 
I'm going to stop on that one and go to these others. But you can see this, but the camera's not going to focus. They are notoriously bad on trying to focus on brushes. You see every wrinkle on my hand, but not the brush. So I'm going to just kind of do this, lay it down. It's going to be better. Now, these kind of brushes, these smaller ones like this that we're altering, are not going to hold nearly as much pain as they did before. You just have to be prepared for that. And the way to do this is to test them out on a piece of scrap canvas or board or whatever. Again, this is that one that it is very even looking. So I'm going to see if I just that. Carefully. This one, I may actually try to shape the outside a little. What I don't want is a roundness to it. Now uh, you can try painting with these and see how they do. And then if you want to do this a little bit more, you certainly can. Like I said, I just wouldn't do this to a good brush. Okay, we'll see how this goes. This will give us a little bit smaller brush for our foliage brushes that we already made earlier. Now, let me show you how I use these brushes. There's no right or wrong way. No one taught me how to do this. I just experiment and play to find out what works. You should too. Texture brushes are so much fun. This one or this one? This is an old flat brush that I've altered to make it more fun. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't want to be fun.
Thanks for joining me in my studio. If you enjoyed this video, you'll also probably enjoy watching the videos I've linked on the screen. Be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. If you're ready for more in-depth lessons, consider enrolling on one of my online courses where I teach classical painting techniques for landscape painters. You can find all of my classes at lanejohnson.com or click on the link in the description below.